Here we are again with another list of recommendations. You would have thought that after the last time I did one of these lists that people would have enough to last them. You know, long enough to be able to figure out their own tastes and their own kind of preferences in anime, but I suppose that, that doesn't always necessarily need to be the case. After all, if that was the case, then I wouldn't be able to have as much fun as I do making these lists. So the last time I went over 25-ish anime films, directors, and studios to give you a variety of different tastes and styles as a kind of nice jumping off point. But when trying to recommend anime, only 25 is a fairly small number, so of course, I have more. As usual, I don't guarantee that you will like everything that is on this list. There are a variety of different genres and styles that not everyone will like, but as I so often say, I hope that at least one of them, I know I'm showing two, but one of them will be to your liking. Before you comment down below, though, telling me how I forgot one of your favorites, please keep in mind that this is indeed a sequel to the previous one. So you might want to watch that first and check out everything that I listed there before starting on what I have here. Also, while I am limiting myself to about 15 or so entries this time around, please keep in mind that any anime I mention by name is probably also worth a watch if you want to go above and beyond what I have regularly listed here. And now, without any further ado, ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcada, and welcome to Glass Reflection Today, 15-ish more anime recommendations. And we begin with one that I really should have had on the list last time. This is a show that I wanted to put on the previous list, but ultimately cut it because of its absolutely horrible availability in North America, but I'll get to that. To try and describe this absolute masterpiece of a story by Naoki Urasawa, I can only put it in this way. You know that figurative question that people sometimes ask? What would you do if you could go back in time and kill Hitler? Well, try to imagine a doctor who has the choice to save an influential man or a small child. On the surface, the answer is obvious. Screw the man with the money, let's save the child. But then, what if that child grows up to be a murderer? What would you think of your decision then? This is the start of Monster, as Dr. Kenzo Tenma has to deal with the fact that a boy he saved years ago becomes one of the most evil men that he will ever have the displeasure to meet. And also, that that man becomes insanely interested in the doctor who spared his life. Totaling in at 74 episodes, Monster is Urasawa's magnum opus. And for reasons I cannot comprehend, it is impossible to get it stateside anymore. And this is the biggest shame ever, because out of any series that I have been hyped for before watching it, this is one of the few that deserved all the hype it got. Speaking of magnum opuses... Revolutionary Girl Utna is the brainchild of Kunihiko Ikuhara, who is mainly known for working on Sailor Moon and another series that I don't really care to get into. But Utna is widely considered to be Ukihara's opus. The animation, while dated, has its moments of brilliance and an expansive soundtrack with a different battle theme composed for nearly every episode. All that aside, however, where the real meat and potatoes lie is in the characters and their relationships. It has a very wide cast, and almost every relationship you can imagine outside of one of a parent and child is explored, whether that relationship breaks taboo or not. That, and you can basically call this subtext the anime, with a story which, when you reach the end, will make you want to go back and go, oh, that's what that means. Wait, what? With such a short amount of time, I can't fully do the show justice in explaining why it deserves to be on this list, but trust me, it does. Space, the only frontier. The anime Planetes is an interesting breed as it manages to make a relatively boring description quite entertaining because this show is about space janitors. Humanity has recently been expanding its reach into the solar system, but with each test and attempt at furthering our reach into space, junk has been left behind from the things that did not 
you know, burn up in the atmosphere. That junk, regardless of size, poses significant danger to any ship attempting to either leave or enter Earth's atmosphere. And so it is up to cleanup crews to go out and make space safe. But this series is oh so much more than just cleaning up junk. In the span of 26 episodes, we see the show's characters not only handle what their industry refers to as a laughing stock of a job, but also see them strive for something greater. These people have hopes and dreams, and the way that the show is able to effectively tell their stories is brilliant. Despite the rather unconventional setting, if you enjoy any aspect of space as a backdrop, Planetes will definitely be worth your time. Despair! People not watching Zetsubo Sensei has left me in despair! Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei is not a series with a plot. It doesn't have a story, and most of the time it doesn't have much of anything, really. It's a slice-of-life series that revolves around a deranged class full of problematic misfits and their suicidal teacher. But what follows is the class's misadventures through reference humor, sexy times, and the often theme of death. Whether you like the show will depend mostly on your sense of humor, and whether or not that matches with what the show has to offer. It's not an off-the-wall random kind of humor like some other shows by the same studio, and at times it can walk down a rather depressing road. But overall, it's a uniquely solid comedy that's a bit more on the weird side than what is generally standard in anime. You know, for those who like that sort of thing. On the other hand, we have Nichijo, a show all about the random off-the-wall comedy-based humor. Want a principal suplexing a deer? This is your show. Want over-the-top, heavily detailed animation about dropping a piece of food? This is your show. Want a series that is quite literally out of fucks to give? Nichijo is your show. Never before or since has a comedy anime come quite to these levels of absurdity and randomness. Cromartie High School came close, but even then it didn't have the extreme budget that this show apparently did for its animation. The biggest downsides to the series actually isn't from the show itself, it's from the fact that Crunchyroll no longer offers it for streaming and thus it's not legally available anywhere. Dang it. <sighs> but at least Crunchyroll has this next one. Bokurano is a story about sacrifice and about greed. It's about a group of children who are thrown into a dangerous melee between giant robots that they have no business being in, but cannot back out for fear of the end of the world as they know it. It's hard to really talk much about the beauty in Bokurano's storytelling without traversing into spoiler territory. Because of this, I've noticed that finding people who have watched the show are few and far between. When you can't properly explain the show without spoiling, you can't really give someone proper motivation to check it out, because even the initial episodes in the show contain some monumental plot twists that will have so much more of an effect if you can't predict them and don't know what they are before they happen. But please take my word for it, it is so worth the watch. If you like shows that take a psychological look into the lives of children put into impossible situations, then Bokurano should be a series that you move to the top of your to-watch list pronto. Sound of the Sky, or Sor no Woto, is one of two anime that I like to pull out every once in a while just to relax and have a pleasant evening with. It's a story about friendship, hardship, music, and how important these things are to people who are confronted with ever-looming adversity. As you may notice, it has the same sort of animation style as shows like K-On! However, it is much tamer as far as the overabundance of cuteness that it portrays. It's much more than just merely high school girls living their uniquely mundane lives. It's an occasionally lighthearted military drama that is as refreshing as it is heartfelt and beautiful. If that doesn't get you interested, then just go and look up its soundtrack. Its calming tunes will make you feel better, even if the show itself is not to your taste. I mentioned this in my review of the series, but I freaking love Berserk. Like, a lot. 
lot, a lot. Honestly, I like it so much that I'm really curious as to why the hell I didn't have it on the original list, but whatever. Berserk is a kind of heavily violent gore fantasy that we don't get to see much of nowadays. It follows a skillful swordsman, Guts, and his dealings with the mercenary group Band of the Hawk, as their leader Griffith traverses the country gaining power and influence to one day potentially take over as king. One might guess that this path is not one to be treaded lightly, and the group of characters end up facing many hardships over the course of its 25 episode run. It's got demon slaying, blood, nudity, and a great soundtrack that wraps it all up in a truly spectacular way. Now it does have a read the manga ending, which I can also recommend because the manga is amazing, but even considering that, because I don't generally like read the manga endings, this series is worth your time. But I'm not biased or anything, seriously. O okay, maybe a little. Angelic Lair is a series adapted from the well-known mangaka group Clamp which I always find myself coming back to. It's the one show on my shelf that I keep looking at thinking, you know, I should review that. It'll give me an excuse to watch it again. Totally forgetting, of course, that I already reviewed the thing like a bunch of years back. It's this rather upbeat tournament style anime about a young girl named Misaki and her crazy cool fighting robot doll, Hikaru. Misaki gets into Angelic Lair because she has this kind of childlike curiosity about it after seeing it on a Jumbotron once after arriving in Tokyo. And after some friendly advice from a totally not suspicious man in a lab coat, she gets her own angel doll and discovers, yeah, she's actually quite good at this whole thing. Like other shows that I watch regularly, it has these heartwarming aspects to it that make it infinitely rewatchable, even if you know how it ends. It is the type of show that you should watch if you can handle the more lighthearted nature that it has and not be bored by it. Most people who watch anime will end up picking a favorite Clamp series after watching a few of them, and this one, this one is mine. This is the other series, like Sound of the Sky, that I enjoy taking out purely for the love of watching it. As the title gives away, this series is about a journey, traveling from point A to, well, wherever. There isn't really a point B, but it's the journey itself that's the adventure here, not the destination. In each episode, our main character Kino stops or gets stopped in a new locale as she attempts to see the world. This allows us, as the audience, to get to experience this sometimes strange and mystical world along with her. This world contains many wonders that are designed to bring up a variety of emotions, both good and sometimes quite disturbing. Because of this though, it's a series that's nice to take in short bursts, a slow, gentle reprieve from whatever else you've been watching, as a faster pace would have you miss out on quite a bit of the contemplation that this series lends itself towards having after each episode. It's only 13 episodes long if you don't include the movie that has never been localized in North America, and ultimately, like the journey itself, is quite open-ended. But despite that, it's a series that I've always been able to get people to watch, even if they're not into anime, as its stories are accessible to everyone. Holy crap, I don't know how anyone expects me to explain the utter insanity that is JoJo in just a paragraph, but yeah, okay, I'll try. JoJo is a series that starts off, well, quite boring actually, with a small family feud that over the course of time expands and explodes into, well, overly bizarre and epic proportions. It's a return to form of the older, action-heavy, macho, manly man anime from the 80s, reminiscent of Fist of the North Star. But at the same time, it does not singularly define itself as such. The overarching plot lines tend to be simplistic, with, for example, one character being an extremely cliche villain archetype of a puppy-punching shitbag just because of reasons, but all of that is made up simply by overflowing itself with style. This show has this personality that it does what it wants because it can, and it's cool at doing it. There is so much sublime testosterone in this series, it spills out into over-the-top action scenes that can only be described in one word. Bizarre. Quite fitting a title of that. Now the series ain't over yet, with the third season adapting the manga's fourth arc that's airing at the time of this video, but honestly, this will end up being one of those series for which I discard my usual motto of the ending being paramount because I almost don't want JoJo to end. But on the topic of over-the-top anime shows, there is one other that I think should be mentioned. If you want a series about action, about overcoming adversity, about fighting spirit, about gritting those teeth, 
then look no freaking further than Tengen Topa Goren Lagan. This extremely dynamic and absolutely insane action series is what has been burned into most anime watchers' minds when someone refers to Studio Gainax. Because screw Evangelion, we know who the real heroes are here. I kid, of course, but it's hard not to get pumped up when talking about a series that goes a bit beyond living up to its hype. Because you can't really imagine just how crazy Goren Lagan is going to get until you experience it with your own eyes. It starts literally from the ground up as our character Simone learns to cope with his social anxieties to eventually be thrown into a life or death situation with the entire planet and the subjugation of his people on the line. This series is giant robots taken to the most unrealistic extremes that you can think of, and it is amazingly entertaining the whole way through. Okay, well maybe not the whole way, there is this dip in the middle that I thought was rather boring, but then it becomes even bigger and more sane than ever before, so it kind of makes up for it. If you haven't seen it, hell, if you haven't heard of it, for some reason, you owe it to yourself to check it out. I would be very surprised if you walked away disappointed. Figured I might as well add this here, mainly because it's the most enjoyable long-running series that I have had the pleasure to marathon through. Generally speaking, I tend to avoid shows longer than 50 episodes in length, with few exceptions, because I find that when you get to that length and longer, there's a lot of time that's just wasted in between arcs and actual decent storytelling that to me could be better spent on another show entirely. Hunter x Hunter was a series that kind of changed my perspective on that. It follows one boy's journey to become one of the world's greatest hunters, to train to become the best, all the while helping out his friends and looking for his father. It's also a series that takes an extremely sudden but gloriously awesome shift in tone, from happy-go-lucky this show is totally for kids to levels of violence and dark themes far different from how it started. Now, it has an extremely slow beginning, and considering the state of the manga that it's based on, there is no end in sight, but the entirety of the middle, the vast majority of the series, is of far greater quality than I could have expected out of a series this long. It's not something that I recommend for you to marathon all in one go, though, but if you take your time with it, I'm sure that you'll enjoy it, probably, as much as I did. So what do the creators of Evangelion do immediately after finishing that gigantic implosion of a series? Well, they make a romantic comedy, of course. As you might expect, though, it's not your traditional romantic comedy. It seems that way at the start. It's upbeat, it has likable and funny characters, but it's a show that never falls into the same romantic pitfalls that you see happen over and over and over again. It's not a series that tries to drag out the romance, not constantly make you question, will they or won't they? Nor does it try the typical plot where characters take forever to realize their true feelings. But it's not all sunshine and roses, and at times it can start to go into much more psychological themes where appropriate. And I loved that about it. But the worst thing about the series is in fact the ending as the mangaka withdrew her permission for Gainax to continue adapting her work. However, if you just pretend that the series ends a few episodes before it actually does, then everything wraps up quite nicely. Check it out if you can find it, and then, you know, let me know what you think. Normally when making these kinds of lists, I would want to avoid any series that is too new. Because if I'm going to put something on a recommendations list, then I want to know that I enjoy it because of what it is, not because I'm still drunk off the enjoyment of watching it. Well, it's been a year since I've watched Shirobako, and if I'm still drunk off the enjoyment of watching it, then damn was it some strong stuff. Shirobako is a rather rose-colored look into the very industry that we ourselves enjoy on a regular basis, with our main character Miyamori being a new production assistant for Musashino Animation. Throughout the series, she goes through all the trials and tribulations of getting two very different anime series through production and onto the air. Her story is written by people who ripped the plots and sometimes characters from their own experiences in the industry. It's probably not the most realistic of interpretations of the industry that you will find, but it is definitely one of the most entertaining. I named it my favorite anime that came out in 2015 for a reason, and if my recommending it twice before now hasn't gotten you to watch it, then here's a third time, because, damn it, you should. So there we go, 15-ish more things for you to potentially add to your watch list, and another video that I can point people towards when they ask me what I think that they should watch. If you think that I forgot something over the course of these two lists that I've done so far, please let me know down in the comments, and if I haven't seen it yet, I will be sure to check it out for a potential third entry in this series of recommendation videos. If you like this sort of thing, and of course the videos that I make, 
on a regular basis. I would be oh so grateful if you went and checked out my Patreon page if you have the time. I would also like to give a very special thanks to Joshua Garcia, Grace Anderson, Nikolai Gray, Lulika Adachi, Victor Ekmark, Samuel Fombolita, Halo Millennium, and Calhoun Boy for donating already because you are all superbly awesome. I hope that you have all enjoyed this list, and until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty.